Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this Remembrance Sunday. As we remember those who served and continue to serve and protect and sustain all that we hold dear in Canada, I'd also like to acknowledge and remember that we are worshiping today on land that has been inhabited by Indigenous people from time immemorial. As settlers, non-Indigenous peoples, we are grateful for the opportunity to meet here Long before today, Indigenous peoples have been the stewards of this place. We especially acknowledge the Huron-Wendat, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and St. Lawrence Iroquois people, and this territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties. Many thanks to everyone who is taking part in making this a special Remembrance Day service, our flag bearers, Mark Leslie and Lloyd Osmond, our piper, Karen Mahon, and our trumpeter, Michelle Labonte. Also, don't forget the Brockville Community Remembrance Day service this Saturday, November 11th at the Cenotaph on Courthouse Avenue, starting at 1045. And I do have a couple of birthday announcements for everybody. We extend our best wishes for a very happy birthday to one of our flag bearers, Lloyd Osmond, whose birthday is today, and Kathy Lockery, whose birthday is on November 7th. Happy birthday. Just a reminder that as it is the first Sunday of the month, today is Loaves and Fishes Sunday. Uh, please place donations of coffee and cake mixes in the basket, which is overflowing, thank you very much, at the back of the sanctuary. Or you can make off donations through your offering envelope marked Loaves and Fishes. We are thankful for the work that Loaves and Fishes does in our community to support those in need. Coffee hour will follow the service in the church hall. There is a sign-up sheet in the hall for you to sign up to help out with coffee hour. Remember... No volunteers, no coffee hour. Uh, the prayer calendar for the month of November is available on the table at the rear of the sanctuary. It was uh, sent out by email as well, and it is available on our website. If you'd like a hard copy, please let the church office know. The Salvation Army is again looking for volunteers to help with its Christmas kettle campaign. Please see the bulletin for more information and to sign up. And no sooner did we finish one PA day camp than we have another one coming up quickly. Please see the bulletin for information on how you can help and share the details with any families or children that might be interested. There are many other items of interest in the bulletin for your attention. Please also check our website and the social media accounts for the latest information on what's happening here at First Church. Um, I also forgot one thing, um, the MOVE committee meeting is, on, is at 9.30 on Tuesday, not at 10 o'clock, that was my typo, so for those who are on the MOVE committee, 9.30. Uh, but I now invite you to stand in body and spirit as the flags are processed in to begin our Remembrance Sunday service. I now invite you to join in the call to worship, which is in your order of service. We will read it responsively. Let us bless the Lord at all times. God's praise will always be on our lips. Magnify the Lord in all ways. We will lift up God's name together in worship and in service. 
God, send your light and your truth as we gather to worship. May they lead us into your holy presence. And now let us remain standing to sing our national anthem, O Canada. of service. Let us read it responsibly. O God of might and mercy, we come to worship you this day, proclaiming your power and your promise in a world where many things keep us on edge. We proclaim your power to defeat forces that work against your hope for the world. We proclaim your love that cracks open our hearts and draws us to you and to one another. We proclaim your promise in Jesus Christ that nothing can separate us from your love. Strengthen our desire to live out our trust in you in friendship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. And we'll continue our worship with the prayer of confession, which is also in the order of service. And you'll see that it's followed by a hymn refrain, Dona Nobis Pacem. I think this one will be familiar to everyone. We will sing that after the prayer of confession. God of mercy, we confess that the world around us is broken and heartbreaking. Countries turn disputes over territory into threats of terror. Old enemies stir up conflict within tribes and nations. The threat of violence keeps us all on edge. We have not learned from past conflicts what leads to peace with justice among neighbors and nations. Forgive us all. As followers of the Prince of Peace, inspire us as the Church to work for a lasting peace for all. separate us from the love of Christ. Hardship? Distress? 
peril or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through the God who loves us. Neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Let us rejoice that no matter what is happening around us, no matter what we have done, God's deep love will never let us go. And now let us remember. God, our help in ages past.
please be seated. Micah was one of the 8th century BC prophets, along with Amos and Hosea, who had the unhappy call to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. The problem in Micah's view was not, not to mention God's view, was the failure of God's people to adequately care for, and indeed they go out of their way to exploit, those whom God calls on the people not to oppress, the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. In addition to this disinterest in social justice, especially by the rulers of my that simply mirrored or idolized the prevailing culture and whose preachers were all too willing to say whatever people wanted to hear. For example, after World War II, German Protestant Christians wrestled with how the German state church of the time had for authoritarianism by emphasizing the virtue of obedience to superior power. German Lutheran theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who, before his execution, because of his role in the resistance movement against the Nazi regime, wrote and spoke out extensively about the church's role in opposing the Nazis. As early as 1933, he wrote that Nazism was an illegitimate form of government and hence had to be opposed on Christian grounds. And he outlined three stages of this opposition. First, the church was called to question state injustice. Secondly, it had an obligation to help all victims of injustice whether they were Christian or not. Finally, the church might have to take active steps to bring the machinery of injustice. Micah did the same in prophetically speaking out against the Judean leaders of his day, the rulers who had the power to make things happen, but who wield that power unjustly and unequally. And the priests that teach for a price, and the prophets that tell fortunes for money. Micah's words echo the theme throughout the Bible, throughout the Bible, that in equal justice and care for the poor are not optional. Today we remember those who served in war and gave their lives because power was being used unjustly to make terrible things happen. However, we also need to look at our world today and see how many people, Ukrainians, Palestinians, Israelis, Sudanese, children, the elderly, are losing their lives because power continues to be used unjustly and unequally. And sadly, like in Bonhoeffer's time, faith leaders of all kinds continue to use religion to support the inequitable use of power and oppression of the vulnerable and the voiceless. In biblical times, the prophets were not social reformers who were pushing a particular political agenda like we just experienced now they were more like the fire alarm somebody has to yell fire or help and call 911 before the fire department or the first responders come or more like the former than the latter they perform that essential first function of announcing that no things are not okay of course, the alarm that the prophets are sounding in Micah's time are, is God's own alarm. People are dying here, and it is profoundly not okay. And you might ask now, who are now the corrupt rulers and religious leaders to whom the prophet's message must be applied? Well, we can look at our governments and our politicians, and we can point fingers at them. But for us in the Western world, who are free to act and speak out against injustice, 
Might his words apply to us, too, as individuals? Now, Micah was neither a conservative, though he based his arguments firmly in Israel's conservative tradition, nor was he a liberal, though he liberally denounced injustice to the downtrodden. Indeed, Micah knew nothing of democratic government or global economics. But as Christians who are followers of the one who who proclaimed to all in language as direct as this text that God will not put up with injustice to the poor and self-satisfied arrogance of the wealthy and powerful, Micah's words ring true today. I now invite Politicians you to disagree join about in whether the cold worship primary is responsibility for social and economic justice lies in the private or the public sector. Let us bless the, the Lord at all times. Provinces or the federal God's government. praise will always be on our but lips. The concern is magnify the Lord in all ways. For social and economic we will justice lift up God's name optional. together in worship and in service. At least not God, for those of us send your light and your truth. Teaching as we gather to worship. May they lead in our us own society, into your holy where presence. We all claim and now let us remain standing to sing our national anthem, O Canada. Micah's words are addressed to each and every one of us and will net no private party or no public or governmental enterprise off the hook. One thing matters for Micah's God. And we've heard this before. These are words that you'll find later on in the book of Micah, chapter 6. He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? We, as believers in God, must not take these prophetic words or any prophetic word in the Bible, for example, for for granted. But you and I also know that that hearing that word is never easy because it holds us and our communities accountable. We would much rather hear positive, upbeat, happy, rah-rah words about ourselves and how much good we're doing. But God knows the truth of our lives. We all fall short daily, and we must repent if we're going to be in honest relationship with God and with each other. So therefore, God stirs up prophets like Micah and like Desmond Tutu to speak the truth to us in love. Not to condemn us, but to invite us into a more authentic discipleship and deeper love to others. As human beings, well, we know we're not perfect. And the prophets remind us that we all fall short. But as followers of Christ who came for all, we are blessed with the grace and love of God in spite of our failings. And it is because we are blessed with that grace that we can hear these words of Micah and also of the prophets of our generation and to know that we can act in our own time and our own place to care for the poor and to speak out against leaders and against power structures who despise justice and distort all that is right. For us as believers, this is not an optional activity. Micah's words are prophetic for us too. Amen. Let us pray. Though the earth groans, roar and the winds rage, Christ sees us through. Though timbers splinter and walls crumble, the Spirit dwells among us. Reassure us through the word heard today that in all life, God is with us. Amen. I'll invite the choir to sing the anthem.
now I invite you to join in the singing of our next hymn, number 749, Be Still My Soul. Please be seated. And now let us come to God today with our prayers. Prayers for ourselves, prayers for each other, and prayers for our world. God of all the ages past, hope of years to come, we gather in this season of remembrance, grateful that you hold each one of us in your memory and your mystery now and for all the time to come. Today, we remember all those who have served to preserve justice and freedom in the wars around the world. 
thinking especially of those who have died and those who carry scars on body and soul. We remember their courage and we remember their families who still ache for lives surrendered at great cost. God, remember them and help us remember. Today, we remember the victims of conflict hiding in forgotten corners of the world, longing for safety and peace, and those seeking refuge among us, praying especially for peace in Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, Syria, Afghanistan, and all those places in the world where wars rage and the innocent suffer. <clears throat> we remember victims of violence in our own country, still fearful and uncertain about the future. Help us remember to speak out for their protection and recovery. God, remember them and help us remember. Today, we remember all those around us who struggle to remember day by day. Those who must cope with the fear of forgetting those who matter most to them and with the fear of being forgotten. Help us remember to reach out in comfort and support so no one is forgotten. God, remember them and help us remember. Today, we remember all those around us who carry on under the burden of sad and hard memories, those weighed down by grief or disappointment, by anger, pain, and loss. Help us remember to offer a listening ear and an understanding heart. God, remember them and help us remember. God of all the ages past, hope of years to come, Help us remember you day by day. Keep us prepared to lift up the grace and truth of your gospel to shine into the harsh and distorted corners of the world so that the world will see that we are faithful followers of Jesus who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God have touched us through the work of many hands and the commitment of many lives over the centuries. We give our gifts today to honor God and all God's saints, praying that we too may be a blessing to those who come after us. Uh, in the bulletin, there is a list of ways you can give to support the church and its mission and ministry in the world. There's also visitor envelopes in the pews if you need one of those. Thank you for all you do and all you continue to do to support this, the work of this congregation in this community at this time. So now stand if you are able. Let us sing together the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <clears throat> Generous God, thank you for your steadfast love which has inspired so many to give their lives in sacrifice. Bless the gifts we bring and inspire our discipleship so that our lives will also witness to your love in Christ's name. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 376, For the Healing of the Nation.
just a reminder again for those who are here in the sanctuary that coffee hour is right after the service. Please go through the doors on either side of the choir loft and down the stairs and join us. So now, friends, Jesus calls us today and every day to be peacemakers. So pray for peace. Work for peace. Trust that peace is possible through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And the blessing of God, source, Savior, and spirit of life be with you now and always. Amen. to be seated for the postage. 